I am Emily Lyons. In 2009, without a high school degree and no money to my name, I decided to start my own business. But since then, I've built several multi-million dollar companies and I don't plan on stopping. Being a businesswoman, CEO, serial entrepreneur, survivor, and general life enthusiast, I'm endlessly jazzed by the business of life, especially the stories of extraordinary people I've had the privilege to meet along my own improbable journey to success. I don't think it's fair to keep that privilege to myself, and I think you deserve to be lifted and shifted by these people too. After all, all inspiring people are inspired people. So get ready to be inspired. This is Mind Your Business. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Mind Your Business. I have missed you all so much. (laughs) I'm happy to be back. And today I'm talking about the millionaire mindset. (sighs) The millionaire mindset. And really, I like to think of this as just like a winner's mindset overall, not necessarily money, but just for success. And I've seen this as the secret sauce that turns, I guess, an ordinary burger into like a gourmet feast. (laughs) But It's really what differentiates people that dream about things, that fantasize about things to actually making it their reality. So let's talk about the secret sauce. First off, let's get one thing straight. The millionaire mindset is not some elusive magic trick. It's not something that only a chosen few people possess. You know, you know my story. You know that I'm nothing special. And I can tell you it is like a muscle. And just like any muscle, the right exercises, anyone can develop it. So no one is born lifting 200 pounds. No one's born bench pressing, you know, 500 pounds, whatever it is. It's all about progression. Starting small, getting better, making it a habit, showing up, showing up, showing up. And there, boom. Next thing you know, you're bench pressing 200 pounds. The heart of a millionaire mindset really starts with having that unwavering belief in yourself. And I know this is really hard and it doesn't come easy. And so for me, it started with showing up, showing up consistently, working harder than everybody else so that I knew in my heart that I deserved success. And with that started to become a belief in myself. And now it's unshakable. But this doesn't stem from overinflated egos, but from those hours, those days, those years of work, those years of toil and grit. It's that fire in the belly that we get, that sparkle in our eye, as if we say, you know, while you're dreaming about success, I'm up working for it. And it's the same reason why Floyd Mayweather used to train in the middle of the night because it conditioned himself to psychologically believe that while his competition slept, he was working, he was training, and it fostered that incredible, unshakable belief in himself. And so the more you show up, the more work you put in, and the more training you do with whatever it is you want to master, the more you are going to get that belief in yourself. And failure, well, to the millionaire mindset, that's just success in disguise. It is the universe's cheeky way of saying, try another door, where the majority of people would be paralyzed by the fear of failure The go-getters, the successful people dance with it. They use it to their advantage. They seek it out because they know that by embracing every stumble, every fall is a lesson wrapped in it. So how can I get better? What can I do next? And if you look at things, that's how innovation happens. That's how science happens. If you never failed, we'd never discover anything. It's not about how many times you fail, how many times things go wrong. It's just how many times you keep getting back up, you keep dusting yourself off and, you know, having a little fun with it. Saying, is that the best you got? I like to I like to tease my failures a little bit, have a little fun with them. <laughs> but, you know, the millionaire mindset is not just thinkers. They're doers above all else. And, and when we talk about mindset, and we talk about manifestation and all of those things, they're so important, but the action part is even more so. And action is a successful person's middle name. It's you know, while so many people get paralyzed by the risks, people with the great mindset are out there taking them. You know, but don't get it twisted. They aren't gambling in the dark. They make calculated decisions, calculated risks. They track what works. They double down on that. It's like seasoned chess players. They're always thinking three moves ahead. So if this goes wrong, what do, what's my next move? Always calculating, always ready to pivot if the game demands. Pivots are important. You know, we fail, but we don't give up. We pivot where we need to. (laughs) 
curiosity may have killed the cat, but it also made the millionaire. Millionaires really have an insatiable thirst for knowledge. And I've talked about this before, constantly learning every way they can, whether it's books, podcasts from other people. They're the ones at the parties who will corner you and deep dive into a conversation with you about what it is you do, how you do it, what's the future of AI or the economic impacts of climate change. Why? Because they never stop learning. They are curious. And their minds are like sponges, constantly absorbing, always evolving, knowing that they don't know everything and they can never know enough. And remember, when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. I love that saying. Right. The next thing is discipline and consistency are the unsung heroes here. Dreams are lovely. They are fantastic. But people with the millionaire mindset know that it's the daily grind, the routines, the unsexy habits that lay the golden eggs. It's like the saying, while you were busy looking for the elevator to success, they took the stairs. They respect time like the precious non-renewable resource that it is. Every tick of the clock, every fleeting moment is an opportunity, a blessing, a canvas to paint a legacy. Every single moment you need to jump on it. And that's why it is just so important to create success habits. The little tiny things you do day in and day out that compound over time to create your dream life. What are those little things that you need to do every single day to make the future you want in six months or 12 months, your reality or 10 years from now. But at the end of the day, it isn't just about the seven, eight or nine figures in the bank account. It's about the journey, the hustle, the challenges they embrace and the limits push. Because the majority of these people, myself included, I love the journey. I love doing things that excite me, that get me outside of my comfort zone, that make me nervous. They excite me. And I am just so driven by achievement. And so figuring out what it is that you love is so important because of this. And it might not be the exact business that you're building, but just how you're building it, what you're doing to get there. But it's really a mindset of that is a testament to human potential and resilience. So if you want it bad enough and you're willing to work for it, the universe will conspire in your favor. And that's not a me quote. That's a quote. I don't know who said it, but something that I often tell myself, if you want it bad enough and you're willing to work for it, the universe will conspire in your favor. If you're willing to Mm -hmm. keep doing it, keep showing up consistently, enjoying the journey, figuring it out, pivoting when needed, the universe is going to help you. It's going to conspire with you. So in essence, it's really the mindset that is the stuff that legends are made of. It's the belief, the passion, the resilience, the adaptability, and above all, relentless action. So next time you think about success, remember, it's less about the glittering gold and more about the grind, the grit, and the gutsy spirit that gets you there. And as they say, don't just dream in your sleep, dream with your eyes open, open your hands busy with your heart aflame. I don't really know what that means, but it sounds good. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. And I'm so happy to be back. So if you want to start with cultivating this mindset yourself, put together a few points that I think are crucial to be able to doing this. So first, it starts with that unwavering self-belief that I mentioned, but having that belief in yourself. So start with small affirmations. If you really, really have low self-confidence, even if you don't, they help everybody. Small affirmations, write them down. I am capable. I am worthy. I will achieve my dreams. And write down your goals and recite them every single morning followed by the affirmations. And you can write down your goals as if they've already happened. So I've talked about this before, but what that does for you and how it makes you feel and you're able to see it as it's real, right? The next thing is embracing failures and expecting them, expecting them to come and opening them with open arms. They are going to come. It's the universe's quirky curriculum. So just remember with every setback, figure out what you learned, write it down and figure out what can I learn from this to get better? What can I innovate from these learnings? It's not just a collection of mistakes, but a roadmap of what not to do next time or maybe of what you could do. But the best businesses come out of failures. The next thing is always stay curious. It's said that curiosity is the wick in the candle of learning. (laughs) Again, I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. Dedicate time every week to learning something new, whether it's a documentary, a course, a seminar, always keep the flames of your curiosity burning. 
I like to listen to Blinkist. It's books condensed into really short blinks. And I find it's really easy to learn things very, very quickly. So I highly recommend it. Right, the next thing is get used to taking calculated risks. Fortune favors the bold, but the wise know when to be bold. So before jumping into any venture, do a SWOT analysis. That's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. So that you can equip yourself with as much knowledge as possible. You know what you're getting into. So you know what you're going to do if things go wrong and if things go right. But push yourself to get outside of your comfort zone. The next thing is discipline and consistency. Like I said, dreams are the starting line. Discipline is the path and consistency is the pace. Actionable step for this would be create a daily routine and then stick to it. Whether it's waking up at 5 a.m., dedicating an hour to reading or allocating time for fitness, consistency is the key here. And start small. Maybe it's I'm going to commit to every single day at 10 a.m. I'm going to take a 20-minute walk. And I'm going to do that for the next couple of weeks. And next thing you know, it's a habit. And next thing you know, you're a lot fitter and you're a lot healthier. But commit to it, figure out what that daily routine looks like and stick to it. Now, the next tip I want to say is networking. Your net worth is often your network. I know you've all heard that, but look for ways to network. So whether that is attending industry conferences, seminars, events, workshops, not just to gain knowledge, but to meet like-minded individuals. You know, when you find the right people, you can go places a heck of a lot faster. You have no idea what opportunities might come out of it. So however you can network, jump on it. Now, you want to get really good at goal setting. So I've got episodes where I dive into goal setting, but the most common framework is SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Every quarter, set SMART goals for your business and for your personal life, for your personal growth. Review them and calibrate them as you go along. Every successful person knows what they're working towards. It makes it so difficult to be able to stay consistent, to pivot when you need to, to have that resilience when you don't know what you're working towards. So get used to setting really great goals, reevaluating them as needed. All right. The next thing is continuous self-investment. The best investment you can make is in yourself. And so allocating a part of your budget for personal development. This could be taking courses buying different books, attending different workshops, those events where you're going to also meet great people that never stop learning because life never stops teaching. The next thing is the power of visualization. What the mind can see, you can achieve. Create a vision board. Paste pictures, quotes, and reminders of your goals. Look at it daily. Imagine yourself achieving them. Feel the success. Simple enough, right? I have seen this time and time again where people have visualized the life that they now live. Like Jim Carrey did this a lot visualization. There's a lot of people. Oprah talks about it a lot. Now, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure that you're moving the board around, that you're switching it up. If you're leaving yourself post-it notes, you want to move it around because we get used to our surroundings. So if we have something and it's just staying in the same place, we'll start to just ignore it. It'll just blend in. So you want to make sure that you are switching it up. Now, the last tip I'm going to say today is financial literacy. To multiply your wealth, you first need to understand it. One of the biggest things that successful people do is they use their money to make more money. And so educating yourself about investments, savings, financial tools, even considering hiring someone, whether it's a financial advisor or whoever, somebody that is trained in this area, but you want to use your money to make more money. And just remember that this mindset isn't a state that you're going to achieve overnight. It is built on lessons, on successes, on failures. And it's a testament to resilience and tenacity and ambition. But every successful person was once just a person with a dream, fire, and the audacity to believe that they could turn that dream into reality. And if they can do it, if I can do it, well, with the right mindset actions, maybe like a little bit of sass in there, (laughs) so can anybody else. So please gear up put those boots on and get marching to the rhythm of your dreams. After all, the universe is ready to conspire with you. All right, everybody, if you enjoyed this short little episode, please make sure to share it with a friend, post it on your stories, tag me. I'd love to see it and repost it. And if you haven't, please do subscribe. Until next time, I'm Emily Lyons. 